Real quick before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we have a brand new acrylic foundation medium. I hope you give it a try. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, let's jump into the video. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to show you how to blend acrylic colors. Now, sometimes people tend to struggle with this, but it's really not so hard, and I want to show you easy ways to do it. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, I've toned the entire canvas, and it's completely dry and ready to go. That's important. I like to do that when I acrylic paint. I've got my flat blender, and let me show you my foundation medium. It comes in a little bottle like this, and I squirt it down. I like to keep it on the table because it's so runny. Just put it in a paper plate or something and then you pick up a little bit and then you can work it into your paints and it, oh, it helps the paints blend it helps you apply the paint easier and i like it especially when i'm starting a painting when you're doing the highlights and stuff it's not so important but watch how it really helps you to blend color that's what we're going to do we're going to learn how to blend color i'm going to show you i'm just going to pick out a spot up here and show you how to blend color and you do it in such a way you know this is an example of perhaps um well, how you would do a sky or something like that. So let me take some blue. I want to do blue and red together because we'll get really pretty purple in between. So I'm going to do white because the white will help us to see it easier. Okay. And I'm going to mix maybe 25% of our foundation medium because this is sort of a background that we're going to be doing. This is the toned canvas, not to be confused with an underpainting or anything like that. See how that spreads on a little easier? It just flows nicely. This medium really helps with that in a way that water doesn't. Water, when you put it in, it thins the paint down in such a way that makes it just whoa all over the place. But this medium makes it still have some body and, and some creaminess to it. It just goes on easier. Okay, there we go. This is not to be confused though with oil painting mediums where you put them down first and you blend into them. These have to go into the brush as you paint. You can't just put it down and hope it's going to work. It, it'll dry up on you because it's acrylics after all. Okay, I'm going to take some red and white. I'm not going to wash my brush out because the red will overpower the blue. Yes. More red because we'll get a really pretty color and I'm going fast. If you don't go quick, this will dry and you will not blend. And I'll show you the number one mistake in just a moment with acrylic painters that I've noticed at least. Okay. See how I flip my brush around when I blend because it's very difficult to load the brush perfectly evenly. Okay. Enough talking. Let's get in here and blend. So while these two layers are wet, I'm going to come in with soft overlapping strokes, blending one color into the next. Get up here and do the, so this whole thing before you're picky about it. Okay, now the whole thing is blended. Now I'm going to be picky and say, okay, I don't like that spot there. I'm going to blend that more. The key here is a feather stroke. You want to come up and lift your hand off. You come back, barely set it down. Don't get in here and go like this. That's scrubbing. Come in with the flat of the brush. Long strokes. You got to think long, long strokes. And look at how beautiful those colors just melt together. <laughs> there we go. That's the proper way to blend something like, say, a background or a sky. I'll show you some other cool things too. But let's let this sort of tack up and I'll show you in just a moment what the number one problem is when blending. And before it had tacked up, I pulled a little bit of the blue back over so that we have this angle. And I want to bring it back to straight. But watch this. I've let it dry just a couple minutes here. Listen to it. Tacky. Okay. Here, here it's sticky like that. But see, I'm I'm unaware of that and I'm just getting right up here and I'm going to grab my, my paint. I'm going to paint my pink back in because remember we wanted that line that we had going. Watch this. I start to paint my pink back in and uh oh. See how scratchy that is? This paint is tacky and that's where most people have their trouble. Now, if you've painted with acrylics, you've probably seen that before. I know I have. See that? And it just not a whole lot you can do about it. So what I want you to do is just let this thing dry to where it's not tacky anymore. We'll go ahead and do that. Fully dry. That's good. Okay. So now it's actually, as it dried, it'll start to look just a little bit better. I still got some vertical lines. Well, not totally vertical, but we still got some lines to deal with. So let me go ahead and take my, my little custom tapered round. And because this is fully dry, we can paint now. I'm going to grab a little bit of my my foundation medium and I'm going right over here into some blue and white. I'll just stick it right back over here. 
blue and white mostly white though you know get it as close as you can you don't have to be perfect and like i said put a lot of that foundation medium in there that'll help you the foundation medium will make it transparent right because there's really no pigment in it and it just it just flows very nicely so you take this brush which is really soft and you can now dry brush blend over any of those hard areas because it's transparent this will be more easy with this medium and what you're looking for beautiful rounded shapes because rounds do blend in very well with other things so soft rounded shapes that's good and what i'm doing is because for the sake of the lesson you know we wanted to make that kind of a straight line i'm going back to that i'm trying to fill in where i screwed it up <laughs> when i was painting when it was tacky there see how that works now i'm going to wipe that out and get more foundation medium in the brush see that more foundation medium and that will help you glaze even more. It looks light now, but don't worry, it'll dry out very nicely. There, that's how you can use dry brush blending techniques. Mm, that's pretty. So you paint when it's wet, you paint when it's dry, but you don't paint when it's tacky. That's the lesson for blending. Now I quickly painted a tree and a rock in the grass field, and then I allowed everything to dry. I pretty much for the most part painted it the whole entire thing while it was wet, so it took me about five minutes. Okay. So now we've got a problem and you can clearly see right here, I didn't put any shadow. In fact, I put less shadow on this side. Now, without repainting the grass area, because remember you have to think of this like in the context of a painting, you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. Rather than having to repaint the entire grass area to make everything look consistent and then just make this side darker, I wanna show you how you can use dry brush blending to kind of repair this area and make everything look right. So first off, we're gonna start with my number four bristle brush. And I'm making sure it's fairly dry. I'm going into my medium. This will help the uh, transparency. We're gonna need that transparency. So my medium, and I'm gonna take a little bit of black, which is good. Some of our vivid sap green. So just black and vivid sap green is actually all we need. Touch of umber, there's a little left. <laughs> there we go. And about half of this should be our foundation medium. Like I said, you can put that in a little paper plate or foam cup or something. It's fairly runny, so you don't want it on the palette. I'm gonna remove just enough paint out of this brush on my paper towel so that there's just a bit in there. I'm gonna start with my finger kind of on the top and flip down. Oh yes, there's that foundation medium working. I hope you can see those little strokes in there. And a little more paint, so that's, that's an easy adjustment. Just put more paint into the brush. See this, grab more paint. <laughs> there we go, that foundation medium was so effective. I didn't need quite as much of it as I thought. I've been enjoying playing with it and learning new and different ways to use it even. The uh, almost unlimited amount of ways you can use it to glaze and, and prepare your painting is actually really, it's better than gesso, way better than gesso. It gives you a wonderful, wonderful texture. I did that actually down here, put a little foundation medium down because I just like the, the feel of the brush on it. It's very good. But look at this, look at this, look at this. See, I still have these little strokes because I'm using this brush and I'm using this medium. I still have the strokes of light and dark so I don't have to repaint it. See, if you were to come up here and it would sol go in solid, you could have to repaint it, otherwise it wouldn't look right. But see, I'm cutting through and leaving some of the background showing through just enough. So there you go, I'm blending these colors in. And that's all you need. You can even add a little more shadow in the grass over here if you want it. There, see how you use that to fix this area? Now it looks very pretty and natural. Now I painted a very basic wave and some rocks. Now they're pretty much dry, so I wanna show you how we can how we can finish this if this was a seascape, because it's already dry. There's not a lot we can do in the way of blending, so i grab a little white, and I'm just gonna stroke it in, and then wipe the brush, and just ever so slightly blend it back. Now here's the trick to this. By the way, this isn't 100% dry, but it's very, very close. I would say it's past the tacky stage, so you don't have to worry about lifting the paint off if you're delicate. If you scrubbed, you would. But let me, here's the, um, here's the trick to this. Work in really tiny spots, and, and the more dry it is, you can do a couple of strokes while it's really, really wet, and then let it dry, and then once it's dry, I guess I shouldn't say the more dry it is because we're not, I don't, I don't want you guys painting while it's semi-wet. But work in small areas. Don't be impatient here. 
or you will be really sad because that's there. That's almost too much. And then you, you come back and you just touch it like this. See that? And what that does is it blends it. The reason that that would not work any bigger than that is because it dries. It seizes up. And you've seen that before probably. That's it. So I want you to go half an inch. Wipe the brush. Wipe the paint out of the brush. And then touch it like that while well, it's still very wet. Do not waste time. Don't do anything but wipe that brush and get it right back up on the canvas. Otherwise, it won't work. There we go. Mm, that looks really good. Look at that shine in there. Have you ever imagined that you could do that with acrylics? You can. Helps when you use top quality acrylics though. That does help. Good acrylic paints really do make a difference. There we go. I'm just doing a dry brush stroke or two here. Nice. And let's show a little light on this one as well, right up in here. Isolated tapping blending. There we go. Take the paint out of the brush. This is the way I would blend if I wasn't sure that I could do it any other way. It's a little tedious, so it wouldn't be my first choice, but it certainly is something that works out really well. There. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of white, yellow, touch of green. I just want an eye of the wave color real quick. That'll do, I guess. <laughs> there we go. A little more blue, a little more yellow. Pretty, oh yeah. Okay, now these rocks have dried up fully. Good, okay. Now let's paint, because you know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to use the, because remember this is fully, this has been dry for a little while now. I'm gonna put, that's just enough. Wipe that brush out quick. Paper towels are your best friend when you do this. And then come up here and tap it just like we did before. Tap it like this. So you've got to work in small batches. Now, if you're working on the eye of the wave, this may be the entire, the entire thing. There. I'm rolling it. Less pressure, less pressure, less pressure, less pressure. Until it just fades away into nothing. I did not use my glazing medium there because I did not want a lot of moisture in that. That was just the paint straight out of the tube. That wasn't so much of a glaze as it is a dry brush blending technique. There. Yes, look at that glow. Oh, that's just really cool. Do you ever think you can make acrylics glow like that? I bet you we can make them glow even more. <laughs> you want to see it? You want to see? Let's take a little yellow. Take a little yellow, touch of blue, lots of white, a little more yellow. Oh yeah, let's see if we can do it. Okay. Just like that, get that brush out, out of the, get the paint out of the brush, get the brush out of, I don't know, <laughs> yikes. When I'm rushing sometimes, my words come out weird. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, that's just absolutely crazy. Now you would obviously want some stuff in the background. I'm not doing that now just because the point is I want to show you how to do blending, but isn't that beautiful? And there's tons of ways to, to do eyes of the wave and everything else. I'm just showing you this kind of this tapping blending deal. Very good. And I'm using my bristle brush. This is the number four bristle brush. It's a, a nice long bristle brush. So it, it works out well for this. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of blue. Touch a red because that'll help to eat up the green that was going on. We'll take some titanium white. By the way, if you haven't seen my colors yet, most of you have, but they come in a nice tube like this. Good size. This is what I use for all of my acrylic painting. They're wonderful, heavy body quality acrylic paints. All right, I'm gonna set a little too much blue. I'm gonna get a little more white into that. I set just a little bit down, wipe your brush. And tap it. I didn't quite wipe my brush out all the way. There. If you have one brush for light and one brush for dark, this would be the time to do it. I should. Why don't I? I don't know. <laughs> I really should. You know what I think when I'm done filming this, I'm going to go get myself another brush. I need at least two or three. I usually paint with two or three. Just today I'm a little disorganized. There. I'm gonna just Because this area is not as important, I can just dry brush blend right over this. I don't care if this is quite as soft. This up here made a lot of difference. This area here doesn't make as much difference to me. 
So I can just use my standard old dry brush blending technique, which is probably no surprise to you guys. There, that's about it. See how you can just use these to feather that out, make it look kind of misty and just very nice. Now one of the last things I'm gonna show you is how to, how to do the same technique but with dark instead of light. So I'm gonna select a dark color. I'm putting a rock right back here and we're gonna do the exact same technique with, let me just wash my brush out. There we go. We got a little pickle jar there that's been repurposed into an art watering, washing station. <laughs> that's too much water. You don't want any water in the brush so make sure you get it really, really dry. There we go, no water here. And look at how you can just stick this rock right down into the foam. And it gives it a reason for it to be crashing back there as well. All right, well, we're done with our little acrylic lesson today, and I hope it's given you some extra confidence to go out and paint some beautiful, soft acrylic paintings. Remember that you can check out all the supplies that I used today on our website. Thanks for watching.